Take your seat. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? You can introduce yourself, please, to all of us. Tell us about something about yourself. Uh, sir, my name is Ridai Zahra. I uh, got my primary year education from all over Punjab, uh, which played a pivotal role uh, in uh, shaping the person that I am today. I'm very social, um, very open to meeting new people because of that. Uh, I did my O-levels from uh, Cathedral School. It was a missionary school. Uh, again, it taught me a lot of things, studying uh, with uh, people from all sorts of uh, faiths. And um, I did my A-levels from Lahore Grammar School and then my bachelor's from Lahore School of Economics. Uh, in my free time, I like spending time with my dogs. I have a lot of them. And I also like traveling whenever I get the time and money. So, why you are looking for the civil services? Um, <clears throat> sir, um, two, three primary reasons. Uh, first is, uh, sir, I believe um, because um, I have looked up to my father and my brothers um, and growing up I've seen them in service and I've seen them do a lot of good. Uh, therefore, I wanted to uh, do the same for the people and uh, to do the same that they did for the people. Uh, second is, sir, I believe that uh, you know, after uh, once you're, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you've fulfilled your physiological and your social needs, you climb up to uh, self-achievement. And I think uh, there's no better achievement than competitive examination. Uh, so there's a need to you know feel good about yourself and to get achieve something in life. Uh, that was another reason I wanted to uh, join civil service. Um, uh, that's primary two reasons. Yes. Sheikh, do you have been in? Uh, law business. You have done this law business economics also? Uh, in A levels, yes, sir. A -level. in my advanced And level. marketing in your graduation. My graduation, yes, sir. What is the size of GDP? Pakistan, what is? Um, sir, if you would allow me to take a guess, uh, I cannot recall the exact amount. It was a, um, close to, uh, sir, I believe, uh, I'm sorry. Sir, sure. How do you see the economic future of Pakistan keeping in view the current scenario? Sir, I believe that uh, there are a lot of challenges being faced by Pakistan today and uh, we have a lot of constraints, especially after COVID in 2020, we do not have a lot of opportunities to grow in a lot of areas. Uh, the trade is restricted at the moment. Uh, also, we because we have been going to um, uh, IMF, uh, for this was the third consecutive year uh, for Pakistan, third consecutive term for Pakistan in which we were going to IMF. So we also have to follow their um, plans and how they want uh, the structural adjustment programs, for example, which we have to follow if uh, we are to take loan from them. So we have a lot of constraints and I believe there are a lot of challenges. However, uh, I think we are, uh, at least in the last quarter, there have been some growth and there have been some uh, positive um, uh, uh, in terms of trade as well, in terms of export and we are going towards positive growth and, uh, as compared to other countries uh, which are going in negative growth for their exports. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, in the coming year things are going to stabilize to some extent after uh, once uh, the COVID uh, thing goes away and uh, once Pakistan uh, needs to work a little bit harder in terms of its uh, economics. Uh, but yes. Now there is a criticism on CPAC that uh, it is a debt trap for Pakistan because we have to pay about $6.7 billion, which is less than what we have to pay to the IMF. Do you think it is so? Uh, sir, I believe that it is not a debt trap. Uh, I do believe that there are no black and whites in this. There's a lot of gray area. So when we say that we have we owe a lot to IMF, that is absolutely true. And considering our economic situation, it is not going to be easy repaying that sort of debt uh, because our uh, foreign currency reserves are uh, not in a great place right now. However, so I also believe that Pakistan, um, this is a great opportunity for Pakistan to grow in the first place. We do not have a lot of uh, projects, this, this level, massive scale projects in Pakistan available right now that can give Pakistan the opportunity to grow its exports to such a large extent. Uh, so I believe that though uh, the uh, giving the loans back is going to be very challenging for Pakistan, but if CPEC was not available,
available i think the uh, opportunity available for pakistan uh, to um, work with china uh, so closely uh, the port that connects us uh, uh, the gawadar port is a great project we have our uh, 10 se um, sezs uh, the our special economic zones. Uh, so all of this is an opportunity for Pakistan to grow and growth is the first step in repaying the loans. Uh, so I think uh, it, it, it cannot be called a debt, debt trap, it can be call, called a challenge uh, in repaying the loan. However, debt trap, I believe, sir, is a, uh, a, a stretch. I would call it a stretch, yes. It's, it's an opportunity for Pakistan for growth. There is a perception that there is a shift of Pakistan government foreign policy and we are tilting more to a new block than the previous one where, where we used to be, say, Saudis and U.S., but now we are tilting to another block. Can you make your comments on that? Sir, I believe uh, it has, if you look at historically, pa Pakistan has always had a very high 